Evie. Um, they sent someone to move the architectural plans. Do you have them? Do they hurt you? I'm fine. Let's go. Well, I ask you a question. Can we do it? What's yeah. The plans? Ah. The plans are lost. <laughs> Evie, I'm sorry. Just concentrate on escaping, please. soon as it came so i got to play see that's why i'm kind of afraid of playing valhalla later on but i i have this thing like my character won't allow me to play valhalla before origins and odyssey so i must find the vault before staric secures the shroud we'll talk to the maharaja again i will talk to the maharaja you will get your head looked at i'm sorry my capture hasn't done your plans You'd be safer on the train. Even if you find the vault, you can't just walk into Buckingham Palace alone. I won't be alone. I'll see you back at the train, Mr. Green. That's... I, I'm not sure in Valhalla are multiplayer missions. If it's actually... There's some content that might be missed after it. But even though... Uh, if I'm not gonna play on release, I'm gonna play it like the beginning of the next year, something like that. Most probably depends when <laughs> Cybercam will come out. Like, actually, this is a good time for Assassin's Creed Valhalla if the Cyberpunk is delayed all of the time. Okay, I think this is all missions. Yeah, this is all missions over here. So. We are ready to jump into the Westminster. Let's do first and uh, let's uh, yeah, clean all the locations around this. Then, yeah, with uh, viewpoints. Then we're gonna do um, secrets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start. Uh, we will. Go from the big uh, big pan from the Elizabeth Tower to this one. Edgar, Holycott, and Bodyguard. Templar Hunt. Let's right. progression look. If it's not book, okay, let's read it. Lucifer is dead. I have recovered the key she stole from me, but I still have not found this route. Our searches of Henry's catalogs did turn up an image of the key and the casket it is supposed to open. The casket was in the possession of the royal family, kept at the Tower of London. I set out for the Tower alone. I felt that Mr. Green would have accompanied me, had I asked. I felt it was best that I carry out this task alone. Miss Fern was already there when I arrived. The Templars had thoroughly infiltrated the yeoman, so it was with difficulty 
that I made my way inside St. John Chapel, where Miss Thorne was continuing her search. She had not found the promised casket, but hoped still that it might be there, concealed in a hidden vault. We thought, this time I did not let my guard down. Miss Turn revealed little upon her death, save for an admonishment that I do not know the true extent of the short powers. It was likely a posture, but it is a true that I know very little. I will find out more when the shroud itself is in my possession. In any case, the casket was not in the chapel, it had must have been removed at some point in the last century, though when and to where, I cannot say. We must find it before the Templars do. I have examined and re-examined the notebook that we recovered from the dockyards, along with Edward Kenway's history of the assassins, but the bullet and bolt holes revealed nothing critical. Henry and I are out of our wit's end. We must assume that the Templars are not further ahead than we are. Henry has arrived with some bit of news. He is obviously excited, so I will finish this later. Crafting? Anything new to craft? Ooh, this 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 looks nice. What about this strength knife upgrade? I will we have uh, like fully stacked. Okay. So how many now we can have? Thousand. The New York capes. No outfit. Increase cook no we had this one I don't remember cookery damage <laughs> Encyclopedia locations the strand Oh nice uh St. Paul's Covent Garden Also known as the Actors Church, St. Paul's Covent Garden has been associated with London's theatre scene since the theatre hall was built on Drury Lane in 1663. Commemorative plaques honoring Britain's finest actors line the inside walls of the chapel. Some of the plaques, plaques, or plaques, plaques. Okay, my English is saying that I don't understand this word. If it's not plaques, but plaques. Okay. Okay, I get this. It's like small board. Some of the plaques that are up to date honor um, the likes of Charlie Chaplin and Boris Carroll, the Trump and Frankenstein. Now there is a crossover I'd pay to see. And yes, I know the monster is not named Frankenstein, I just wanted to piece off the nerds. Hello nerds, treat you. So, <laughs> Salons Paul Covent Garden was the first chapel built since the Protestant Reformation, when the Earl of Bedford's commissioned architect Inigio in, in, in Jones he requested that the chapel be not much better than a bar. To which John supposedly replied, Then you shall have the handsomest barn in England. John himself had a background in theatre having staged over 500 productions with such playwrights as Ben Johnson making the theatre's association with the stage all the more appropriate. The chapel was built in 1633. It's Portico is the setting for the opening scene for George Bernard shows the uh, Pygmalion, which has been performed and adapted countless times all over the world. Uh, we were going for Conqui Bounty Hunt? Yeah, Bounty Hunt. Or not. Templar Hunt. Yeah, Edgar, Colicut and Bodyguard. Suggested level 9, finally. Griffin, Collicott is the Templar Order's most trusted messenger. He is so trusted, in fact, that he has been tasked with carrying out special operations, this tend to involve retrieving confidential information for the Order and then killing the sources. The Templar Order denies its partnership with Collicott, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Collicott often travels with a bodyguard to ensure his plans are not uh, destroyed. Wow, 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 uh, 67% and here's like, ah, okay, 83, this is like for each of those, we have some percentage perks, this is like, I'm playing this quadra kill, this, 
We haven't done any quadra kills. Okay, we are not good at this game. Uh, survive a fight after entering a critical state. A multi counter, I kill none. Okay. <laughs> and there are so many things we could do. Use the throwing knife to kill an enemy from cover. 128. Let's do. Oh, uh, let's do the bounty. Templar hunt. Templar hunt is actually better, better version of the hunting. It's bound hunt. Doesn't allow. I mean, it allows allows us to kill, but it's not desired effect. We'll grab the illustrations, the flower, and here that. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't there a way to jump? Wait. Somewhere? No? Probably on the other side, but we're not interested on the other side. Nah. Hello. Nice. Eleven out of twenty. So we... Ah, we don't have a, or do we have a? I don't think we have. Uh, maps. Wait a second. Okay, the chests are visible all over the undiscovered thing. So yeah, we have the map of treasures. Database entries, let's see them. Collectibles, pressed flowers, daffodil, self love, and illustrations 34. The Oxford and Cambridge Bond Race, an old varsity or Okay, and there is a location Westminster, Richmond Terrace, the Eight Houses. Long since demolition that made up Richmond Terrace were built in 1822 by George Harrison, the architect, not the Liverpudlian theater enthusiast. They were opulent, Greek-influenced homes designed to attract only the elite of London homeowners. All eight homes were bought and occupied by a, a 1825, one of the first eight homeowners, former uh, Secretary of State William Haskinson, achieved some unfortunate fame as the first widely published case of death from being hit by a train in 1830. At least he was first, imagine being the second. Another homeowner, Sir Robert Farquhar, was a member of parliament who served as the governor of Mauritius. The eighth house, the eighth house was purchased by the General Board of Health in 1850 and became their main office. Oh.
I air assassinate the target. Air assassinate the target and where the target? I'm gonna find him in a moment. Let's mark this guy, okay. As few as possible those running guys around them. Oh yeah. Gonna chase him like that. The second one can be killed by a headshot. seen her what's more different weird he hasn't seen us but no her feelings Templar <laughs> Templar had completely okay the next one is Way Linton as a bounty hunt my least favorite things. Location, so. The Wind's Mister. Montaco House. Persisted one. Right, so one thing I discovered putting together this research there is more than one Montaco House. I know. Try and call up yourself. The first one, built in 1675 and belonging to Ralph Montagu, would eventually become the home of the British Museum. This is not the Montagu House. In 1731, Ralph's son John sold his father's house and bought up three adjoining plots of land in Whitehall. On this plot, he sought to build a larger, grander house that his father Sigmund Freud would had some things to say about this. Mind you, the blog said a lot of stuff and most of it was about your mom. Mm. Hey, my first your mom joke. Congrats. Anyway, in reality, the second Montagu house was a relatively modest mansion by the standards of the day. Keep in mind that property was over 4,300 4, square feet, so to hell with 18th century standards. John Montagu died in 1749 and the house became the property of his daughter marrying his son-in-law George Brandnell. That's right, James Brandnell, great-grandfather, owned this house for about 40 years. Or at least, at least he owned the house that used to be here. In 1859, the house was demolished by its latest owner, Walter Francis Scott. Well, who was James Brandnell's second or third cousin, if I'm tracking this family tree correctly. I hope you're taking notes. In three years' time, Scott had built in its place this French residence-inspired mansion, which contemporaries called a palatial residence. It was designed by the architect William Byrne, known for the hospitals and castles he had designed in his native Scotland. The house was acquired by the British government in 1917 and converted into office space. This is the dream of every piece of classic architecture, isn't it? Oh please, allow me one day to be converted into workspace housing, petty squabbles and a bad cafe and Marine who can't wear exile and lead by only the most John Dixon of strip lighting. Anyway, it was demolished in 1950, so the dream was over pretty fast. Too bad. Here's like Way Linton. Once again, uh, what he did? What? 
Did he do? Where is that? Uh, Wellington. Wellington is known for two things. Random acts of violence and public drunkenness. A criminal since the age of 12. Linton is now 22 and his lust for crime has only increased. Having recently caused disturbance in the uh, nicer parts of town, law enforcement has taken quite an interest of it, in him. Let's grab him. Alive. Okay, this is over 100 meters, let's go. Oh, the bottle of beer, nice. Easy, easy. Show me. Collectibles, beer tasting notes. A Smith and Sons Pale Oil. This is not the beer, this is a formaldehyde in a stoneware jack. In a mortuary somewhere, there is a freshly embalmed corpse with a lovely aroma of hops and fine lacing down the glass. Frankly, I'd rather put that in my mouth than this swill. Okay, in the play aisle. Did not work for that guy. You a cop or something? Quiet down, Mr. Linton. Hush now. A lady? I've never fought a lady before. You are here to fight me, well, are you not? Up to now? I'm here to take you to the police. Let me go and let's have a real tussle, shall we? Done it. Hello, I'm your website. How are you? The Mister, the Foreign Office. Well, well, okay. By the time George Gilbert Scott was hired to design and build the new foreign office building, the original building had fallen into such despair that Foreign Secretary Lord Mulsberry was nearly crushed to death when a piece of the ceiling fell on his desk in 1852. Good. Good. That's good. Have you played Syndicate? Yeah, I'm playing for the first time. I'm like, I think it's an end game right now. Westminster is left to do. And yeah, yeah, playing for the first time. 
Actually, that's like pretty old again, though. Don't know why I haven't played it before. Try it's very fun. Um, the contest was held to find a design for the new building in 1857, and although Scott's design only came in the second place, he was hired for the job at the insistence of Prime Minister Derby, who loved Blava. Who loved Scott's Gothic style? Before Scott could get any work done, however, Lord Palmerston was elected Prime Minister and demanded that Scott build the foreign office in a classical style. The problem was this, Scott hated classical architecture, but this was a well-playing job and Scott did not want to lose the money, so he came. The foreign office was finally built in 1868 in a classical Italian style. Neither Scott nor uh, Palmerston liked the building. Good job, guys. It's beautiful. Yes, indeed. I mean, I really like the London there. Like in both of them games. Like a month ago, I was playing Unity. Also, a very good game. I really enjoy those. I actually, kind of way to play Origins and Syndicate. But uh, no, sorry, Origins and Odyssey. Uh, I have Odyssey already. I have to buy Origins. They're so. I mean, I won't be able to play Valhalla on time. No way. Are you gonna play Valhalla? Have you purchased this already? Not to waste his own hardware, Scott modified his original gothic design and used it to create the Hotel of St. Pancras station. St. Pancras is now where the French arrives thanks to a direct train they can take from Paris. I will never understand why we made it so easy for them. Okay, uh... There's a... Thank you for the follow, I appreciate it, it's bad. Okay, uh, Harrison Harley or Red Growler Disley. This and this. Did you stream Unity? Yes, I did. Yes. A uh, full playthrough of Unity was made. And it was like posted on YouTube also. My first video on YouTube, yeah. Okay, so let's go here. Harrison Harry. Let's cut the road. 